Welcome to the 2021 Mead Creator Awards. This is the first time this has ever happened and I'm hopeful to be able to do it again. Um, I decided I wanted to host an award ceremony for all the YouTube Mead creators. Now, it's important to note, I'm not putting myself in the running because I did not want to create any weird bias or have people question results. So none of the things in this today will have uh, my channel in it. I'm just hosting it. Here are all of the categories that um, could receive nominations. So we have category number one, the most beginner friendly channel. Category two, the most scientific mead channel. Category three, most innovative YouTube channel. Category four, the underdog award. So the channel that you know needs to get a little bigger, should be getting bigger based off the reputation. Um, number five, is the best use of music or soundtrack in videos. Number six is the creator I'd most like to have a beer with. Number seven is the most down to earth brewer. Number eight is where we get into the video portion, the most historically, historically accurate mead recipe or video in this case. Uh, category nine, most creative use of spices in a mead. Category 10, most creative use of fruit in a mead. Category 11, most ridiculous mead recipe. And category 12, most WTF moment in a mead video. So here's what I did. I created those categories because I think it kind of spans a good sphere of mead making world, especially on YouTube. And I opened up the floodgates for nominations. So I received a bunch of nominations from people for each category. The first really seven, eight categories are for channels in general, and then the last few are for specific videos. So I'm going to go through and tell you about each nominee for each category, and we'll get to the results. So after, I should say this, after the nominations, I went ahead and compiled them into a voting sphere, and we had people come in and vote, and we had over 200 and looks like 75 people vote on all of this. So this is a good little portion of our meat sphere. So here are the results and the nominations for each category. In category number one, which was the most beginner friendly channel, we had the following nominations. We had DIY fermentation, city steading brews, doing the most, Faywood mead, mead with Eric and Derek, happy homestead, method to the meadness, and basic brewing. Of those nominations, we had a, quite a few votes and you'll see the results right here. The winner for the most beginner friendly mead channel is City Steading Brews. Congratulations to City Steading Brews for that. That is a, a quite a cool accomplishment. Obviously the mead world is um, full of beginners and we wanna have beginner friendly content. Now I have no doubt that the other people also have beginner friendly content, but specifically City Steading Brews has shown based off of their community and the mead community at large that they have the most beginner friendly mead channel. We're gonna go ahead now and hop on to category number two. This is the most scientific mead YouTube channel. The nominations for this were Homebrew, Homebrew Challenge, Doing the Most, City Steading Brews, Mead with Eric and Derek, and The Art of Science and Mead. The winner for the most scientific mead YouTube channel is Doing the Most. Doing the Most is, um, of course, another one of these nominations, another channel, and uh, Again, I will kind of say this about each channel. I feel like every channel has a little bit of these things, but the community at large has said, doing the most has the most scientific mead making channel. Let's go ahead and go on to category number three. The most innovative YouTube channel. We have doing the most, city steading brews, homebrew for life, mead with Eric and Derek, and rag and bone meadery. And the most innovative mead making YouTube channel is doing the most. Again, I will uh, say, as I give all of these announcements, go check out these channels. These are very, very fun channels. And every channel listed here, especially the ones nominated, is phenomenal. And I think that everyone should go check them out. There's a ton of great content coming from all of these channels. So please, 
Of course, check out the, the winners, but go check out the people who might not have won because they're making some great stuff as well. We're moving on to category number four. This is the underdog award. This is the award for the channel that, um, I mean, it's the underdog. I, I don't have a greater definition than to say, uh, normally the underdog is smaller. So basically a lot of these channels are smaller. Again, go check them out. Um, here are the nominations for the underdog award. We have The Brew Tank, Happy Homestead, Feywood Mead, Doing the Most, Hanging with Hodge, Arrow to the Mead, DIY Fermentation, Mean Brews, Mead with Eric and Derek, Texas Longhouse Mead, and Berserker's Den. It's a lot of channels, a lot of nominations. The results of the this vote were Baywood Mead is the underdog or gets the underdog award. Category number five, we have the best music slash soundtrack use in videos. The nominations for this one are doing the most, Baywood Mead, Rag and Bone Meadery, Arrow to the Mead, DIY Fermentation, and Mead with Eric and Derek. The winner for the best use of music and soundtrack in videos is doing the most. And of course, I am going to show you the results as well because I want to be fully transparent. You can find all of the complete polling results in a Google form below, excuse me, a Google doc below. So if you want to see how the breakdown was for each thing, for the most part, there was a, uh, some of them had big, I mean, a clear like overwhelming winner. And there are a few that were close and I'll tell you about the close ones um, as we go to, to them. Category number six, the creator I'd most like to have a beer with. The nominations for this one were Arrow to the Mead, Storm Before Dawn, Texas Longhouse Mead, Hanging with Hodge, Rag and Bone Meadery, Mead with Eric and Derek, Genus Brewing, Flora Brewing, City Steading Brews, and Feywood Mead. The winner for this category was City Steading Brews. Let's go on to category number seven. This is the most down to earth brewer. So the, the nominations for this one were, were doing the most, City Steading Brews, Texas Longhouse Mead, Hanging with Hodge, Feywood Mead, DIY Fermentation, Mead with Eric and Derek, Trent Musho, which is the brew show, if you've ever seen that, Arrow to the Mead and Happy Homestead. The winner for the most down to earth mead YouTube brewer is City Steading Brews. In category number eight, we have the most historically accurate mead recipe. This is uh, where we start our video portion. So I would like to go ahead and highlight and give you a little bit of taste of each of the nominations. I'll tell you them first and then I'll play a quick clip. We have Rag and Bone Meadery, which is their historical Bavarian mead. Uh, we have the making medieval, making medieval mead like a Viking, which is tasting history with Max Miller. We have the Würzburg 1350 historical German mead from Feywood mead. We have the Welsh Metheglin mead from CS uh, Brews. And we have the paragraphic video that is the world's oldest beverage. So here's a quick clip of each one. Hello friends, and welcome to Halloween shield wall or a marauding Norse Viking. Get ready for that sweet, sweet taste of alcoholic honey, mead. This time on Tasting History. With the water. No better way to drink than uh, get to the source right here. Know, I'm so excited about tasting. <laughs> you know, all your friends and family will say, you know, so many 90%. I've never tried dandelion honey before. Okay, I can get but a little bit. But it smells like honey. Yeah. I'm going to try to be as historically accurate in my practice as possible. So, you know, that includes adding egg white if it tells me to. And so the winner of the most historically accurate mead recipe is City Steading Brews Welsh Mead. We're going to keep going. Here is category number nine, the most creative use of spices in a mead. I believe that there are lots of uh, very interesting ways to use spices, which is why I created this one. I think that uh, 
as you go through and scroll through YouTube, there's a ton of cool ones. Here are the nominations for them. We have the dandelion slash spring flower mead from Feywood Mead. Sim the simple ginger beer and mead recipes from Doing the Most. The Skyrim Fortified Health Potion Mead from Rag and Bone Meadery. The Ruibos, Bos, I can already say that, Tea Mead from City Study Brews. The Hopped Turmeric Ginger Citrus Methaglin from Tim Huffman. Here's a quick clip of each one. Already planning on making just a dandelion mead, but I wasn't gonna film it. But then since the sound got totally destroyed for basically the entire video. Even though Skyrim came out in 2011, that would be 10 years ago. I've done six, but I did eight, so we're gonna continue on with that. And I thought, well, how big is a tea bag? Because we have loose Ruibos tea. So I said two, te two teaspoons, so I did. For a mostly non-alcoholic version and a version brewed up as a session mead. So let's take a look at the ingredients for our mostly non-alcoholic version. The ingredients. And the winner for the most creative use of spices in a mead is City Steading Brews with their Ruibos Tea Mead. Category number 10 is the most creative use of fruit in a mead. Here are the nominations. We have Arrow to the Meads, Mead Stampede, second place fruit category. It was a Marionberry brew. Homesteadonomics Prickly Pear Mead. Doing the most, Ecto Cooler Homebrew uh, Halloween Mead. DIY Fermentations Making Cranberry Sauce Wine, which I will say that I, I as I'm reading this, I'm going, that's not quite a mead, but it slipped past me. <laughs> um, Rag and Bone Meadery Homebrewing Mead with a Lambic Beer. And it had, uh, there's more to that title, I missed. Um, Baywood mead, a cranberry sauce mead, and Texas longhouse mead, banana mead, three different ways. Here's a quick clip. About three months, so hopefully it won't affect the taste, but uh, I've read a few people have done it and really haven't experienced any odd results. Um, but anyway, so. Because I still made mistakes. There are things that I've already learned since then, and I think if I were to do this brew again now, I could do it a little better. After all, it came in second place, right? Not first. Always room for improvement. And finally, like I said when I introduced this. Stuff like that on them. And then I just prefer not to use them in my brew. Some people do, I just prefer not to. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is you wanna get some over, close to overripe bananas, get them cut up, and put it into a freezer bag and you go ahead and stick those in. <laughs> this is why we brew outside. <laughs> so now, should I mash it with like my fist? I'm yeah, go gloves. for it. I mean, you got <laughs> gloves on. Some of them are a little like chunky because we, we froze them. I've already got some go firm in here. Um, I'm going to be adding QA23. But before I get going, uh, you know, this is my first time working with cranberries. So, <clears throat> I have. I'm going to be using a Red Star Premier Classic wine yeast this time around. Now, if you don't have wine yeast, you can always use the old standby. The winner for the most creative use of fruit in a mead is Homesteadonomics Prickly Pear Mead. The most ridiculous mead recipe was also another one of these categories, and I thought this one was fun. Here are the nominations. There is the Method to the Meadness, Star Wars, um, um, there's a lot of words here I'm gonna mess up, Sesta Spore Mead, the Doing the Most Cheese Mead, the Ghost Pepper Capsicumel from Solstice Meadery, um, Brewing Up a Boche with Mars Marshmallow Peeps from Desultory Brewing, how to make mead with fruit or fruit loops mead, excuse me, from City Steading Brews, and making a Frankenstein mead with mead and mead with Eric and Derek. 
Here are some clips. This lovely Christmas berry honey. Fruit Loops meat. I'm gonna let you in on a little secret that I learned from a couple of friends of ours. They had this plant growing on their property that they make tea from. And they said, yeah. That's Frankenstein. I took a little bit of everything, jammed them together, and we'll see if it comes alive. One pound of cheddar cheese powder. 12 pounds of wildflower honey, and water to 5 gallons. We will also be using diammonium phosphate. I've gone ahead and sped this clip up. You can see me tearing the weight of the pot out of the way so I can uh, get an accurate measurement of the honey. I've got three... And the winner for the most ridiculous meat recipe is... Doing the most, we made a cheese meat. The final category is the most WTF moment in a mead video. Now this is talking about the kind of outlandish things that happen in YouTube videos. I myself as a creator do a lot of things and um, that's why this category was fun for me because I look back at mine and I have a lot of WTF moments for sure. Here are the nominations for this category. Arrow to the mead, can over pitching ruin your mead? Um, I vividly recall that this video uh, he dumped a pound of yeast into a one gallon brew it's pretty wtf doing the most how to make glowing homebrew uh mead which is basically he made a glowing brew which is pretty crazy mead with eric and derek explosive mead um there is exactly what the title says explosive mead as you add nutrients it goes volcano mode and last but not least, Faywood Mead's Hydromel Series Tasting. There's a fun moment in that video where um, something blows up. I won't spoil it for you. Here are some clips. It's already really gross. It smells horrible, and I'm not really sure how much more yeast I can even add and still manage to dissolve all of the yeast into the must. I'm having a hard time imagining. Whoa. Well, I wasn't expecting that. Hi everyone, welcome back. This is my cousin Erin. Hi. It's your first time meeting her clearly. Yes. This is the Hydromel series tasting, so we've got one of each here. That is a glow-in-the-dark mead. The winner for the most WTF moment in a mead video is doing the most with how to make glowing homebrew drinks. So now I would love to throw it to the winners for each thing I've reached out to, to try and get them um, to respond and you might see some, you might not. So here are some responses from our winners. Hi everybody, I'm Brian. I'm Derica, and we're from City Studying. And we would like to extend a huge thank you to all that nominated and voted. We are both humbled and honored by the response to this. Congratulations to all the other winners and nominees. And a big thank you to MMM for putting this all together and making it happen. Scott. Thanks for watching and have a great day. Bye bye. Thank you so much everyone who voted for me. I'm so excited. <laughs> I won uh, the Underdog of the Year award. I just think that is really awesome um, that I'm, I don't know, so many of you kind of consider me in that way. And uh, yeah, I'm really excited to, uh, to see what next year holds. So thank you, thank you, thank you. I appreciate you all so much. Um, I'm really excited. Thank you. Mwah. Love you all. See ya. Holy smokes, thank you all who nominated us, who voted for us. We are really humbled that you all thought we were so deserving of these various awards. Big shout out to Man Made Mead 
for hosting what I guess is the first ever Mead Creator Awards, but also a big shout out to all the other creators who were nominated. If you looked at the list, there are some really, really excellent creators on that list. You should check out all of them, subscribe to all of their channels. There's some really cool stuff happening out there in the Mead world on YouTube. And so Man Made Mead, in your honor, I feel like it was only right that we have a drink, a toast to you, a toast, a toast to the host. A toast to the host from doing the most. Hit the lights. Cheers to you, Garrett. What's up, guys? My name is Joe with the Home Ceramics YouTube channel, and today Garrett informed me that my prickly pear mead won the most creative use of fruit in a mead category. So I want to say thank you to all of you guys who watched that video and threw my name into the nomination category. Very cool honor. And I also want to say congrats to all of the other winners of these mead awards. So this has been a ton of fun. I've been so thankful to be able to do this. As someone who's in this mead community, I love that I can use what power I have to help um, put light and show other mead content creators. And what you'll find is if you go check out these other channels, there's a lot of amazing content. Every single person nomination, nominated in this video has awesome content on their channel. I wanna say a huge, congr huge congratulations to the um, winners of this. We have quite a few winners. I'll show all the categories and winners right here. This is for 2021. Um, depending on where my life is in 2022, I would love to host this again, maybe with some new categories or some new things. Um, I want to know what you think down below. Uh, I would love to, you know, get your brain thinking about next year. As you see videos, as people create videos, go ahead and kind of tag them in your brain and say, hmm, Maybe that would be a cool nomination because who knows? I might do the same categories. I might do some different things, but I've enjoyed this a lot. Leave a comment down below. Um, I have, uh, I, I just have such a fun time getting to do this. And while this video has taken a lot of editing, I think it'll be well worth it. Thank you so much for watching. Congratulations to all the winners. And I hope you will check out all of these amazing YouTube mead have a great day and cheers.